like a sick, cruel joke, isn't it? A nightmare within a nightmare. You hope to wake up any moment and be out of this horrid catastrophe. Maybe you pray to whatever god you believe in for it all to end. Maybe you don't believe in god, but pray anyway, just because you're so desperate. You feel the end of the world coming right around the corner, but you're absolutely powerless to stop it. Forced to stand on the sideline while your fellow countrymen gleefully rush towards nuclear Armageddon. As long as it means they don't have to see any more brown people. That's not the part we see in many post-apocalyptic video games. The part we usually see is the brutal, ugly aftermath, scratching our heads at how a once advanced civilization could fall so quickly. Now we know. Such is the place we find ourselves today, taking a look at In Exile's Wasteland 2, a return to the old-fashioned way of thinking, of doing things the way they used to be done, calling on the nostalgic time that used to be better for some, but immeasurably worse for others. A time to turn a once promising future into hell on earth. I hope that goes double for the game too, by the way. Do you know, I actually backed Wasteland 2, one of the few that I have over the years. I have no idea why, this isn't really my type of game. I think I just got swept up in the hype, to be honest. I'm willing to take a bet a lot of people were too. I don't think the return of a classic game franchise or whatever they were marketing it as would have done much good. Of course, I say that, but Wasteland 3 tore Fig up not that long ago, but I have to wonder how much that was hype for Fig and the success of Psychonauts 2. But that's a campaign for another time. Preferably when we know anything about it. Whatever. I promise I'm not going to spend this entire episode shitting on Wasteland. So, Wasteland 2's Kickstarter page. Like I said, you have to keep in mind that this was pretty early in the days of the Kickstarter bubble. It has all the usual signs one of those early Kickstarter campaigns has, which is to say there isn't much gameplay shown, there's a whole lot of text talking about ideas and not much concrete information, and no risks and challenges section. It really is stunning to see a Kickstarter page in this day and age without even a single screenshot of gameplay. Hell, there's barely even any concept art. You could really tell that series creator Brian Fargo really did just have an idea for the game. The original Wasteland came out way back in 1988, ironically the first time Donald Trump ever considered running for president. And that's not at all a sign or anything, <laughs> no. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, keeping in line with the theme of old Kickstarter campaign, you have to scroll past 100 updates posted after the fact on the main Kickstarter page before getting to the meat of the campaign. Again, it's a lot of text, though maybe not as much as you might be expecting. The page starts with a section titled, What is Wasteland 2? Which starts with a rather long-winded explanation of what the original Wasteland was. Wasteland 2 was the direct sequel to the first ever post-apocalyptic computer RPG. The original Wasteland was the inspiration for the Fallout series of games, and the first RPG to allow players to split parties for tactical considerations, to face players with moral choices, and to make them deal with the consequences of their actions. It was the first to provide far more than the one key for one lock style of puzzle solving. It was groundbreaking, which is why IGN named it the top 25 PC games of all time. Eh, you get the picture. It then goes on to say that Brian Fargo will be coming back, obviously, as well as the original Wasteland game designers and a musician from Fallout 1 and 2. If you actually want to learn anything about what Wasteland 2 itself is, you have to scroll down past the Meet the Wasteland 2 team and the So Just How Kick-Ass Will Wasteland 2 Be sections to find the seemingly oddly titled How Is All of This Going to Work paragraphs. These handful of paragraphs will have to satiate your desire to know what you're going to spend your money on. We're going back to the original and building from there. No first person shooter, we're going top down so you get a tactical feel for the situation. And we're not ditching the party play to turn it into some hack and slash blood fest, oh. It's turn based tactical with a storyline that will be deeper and broader. We're determined to keep the gritty, grim, and satirical writing. We're going to pitch these moral dilemmas to you. You're going to be faced with the consequences of your actions. And that's kind of it. 
The next paragraph talks about the planned 18 month development schedule <laughs> and a closed beta. From there, the rest of the page kind of rambles on about why they're asking for a million dollars, which was a huge gamble at the time, and how many copies of the original game sold, and how expensive it was, and all that fun stuff. In terms of any information about what Wasteland 2 will actually be like, the paragraph that I just read was kind of it, so yeah, asking for $900,000 was indeed a huge risk. Of course, none of my whining really falls to reality though, as in exile easily passed their technically $900,000 funding goal, Brian Vargo said he'd pay the last $100,000 himself, I think he was just bragging. When the campaign closed on April 17th, 2012, they collected $2,933,252. It's amazing to think that Fargo's name, Wasteland's nostalgia, and the popularity of Kickstarter at the time was more than enough to get this campaign over the hump, considering how damn sparse it was. There's no way this would get that much money these days, and possibly wouldn't even meet its funding goal at all. Now, In Exile did do a great job of releasing periodic updates, though some of it does highlight how silly the original campaign was. They released a vision document better detailing the game in July 2012, and the first gameplay footage in February 2013, quite a long way off from launching their campaign in March 2012, wasn't it? But there's no point in crying over spilled milk, is there? Wasteland 2 obviously did release, coming out in September 2014 to rave reviews. In Exile have clearly learned from this campaign as well, and have been able to keep up with the changing landscape of the crowdfunding scene. Wasteland 3's Fig campaign is a massive upgrade over their old Kickstarter, and the people agree, raising over $3 million this time. Look, there's actual gameplay footage from the get-go! And better yet, pieces of concept art! <laughs> But even better than that, the page is clearly laid out, defining what exactly this third iteration of the franchise will be. There's no long-winded rambles about why they're seeking money. Okay, well, there's, there are some bits about why they're using Fig, but the meat of the campaign is about Wasteland 3 itself. The game is moving on from the desert and going to be set in the snowy mountains of Colorado. They've clearly listed new features and improvements over the previous game and talked in detail about story and gameplay. Although it is worth pointing out that Brian Fargo is on the board of directors for Fig, as is Tim Schafer, the guy behind the equally successful Psychonauts 2 on Fig. I just find that a bit questionable, frankly. Those were easily the two most successful campaigns on the platform, so there are bound to be questions that still have yet to be answered. But Wasteland 3, and indeed Psychonauts 2, are worthy of their own episodes of Kicked. Instead, consider this video to be a quick look at the origins of a highly acclaimed game, the start of Kickstarter really, and the precursor to a much better run crowdfunding campaign. If you're wondering, I think Wasteland 2 is shit. How can you miss somebody that close? Why do I miss everybody all the time? Why are all the crates full of booby traps? <clears throat> uh, don't tell the developers that. Okay, bye! Even though I'm not a fan of Wasteland 2 myself, I can appreciate the love and attention that went into it. Fargo and company clearly cared about what they were putting out, and the fans and backers alike seemed pleased with what they paid for. If you'd like to be pleased with something you pay for, why not consider backing Clickist on Patreon for more videos like this one, and of course our lovely written content over at Clickist.com. I mean, we know you're not going to, but I figured I'd ask anyway.